we, we just saw, right, Anthony Davis, he left Wednesday's game with what the team said was a head injury. So now, 15 hours later, what is the latest on Davis? Well, you guys spoke to a source close to Davis this morning who told me that he believes there's not any scenario that he can envision where Anthony Davis does not play in game six. The source added, quote, it's the playoffs. So certainly uh, Davis will be, uh, you know, continue to be monitored by the Lakers. Uh, we're going to speak to Darvin Ham in a few hours, get an update from the coach. The team has off today. They're not practicing. They're not gathering for film or anything of the sort. Let everybody rest their bodies up for this pivotal game six. But things are trending in the direction that we're going to see Anthony Davis back in the lineup on Friday night. Wow. OK, so no scenario where Anthony Davis does not play in game six. And Dave, the team, they, they never use the term concussion, right? But whenever whenever we see someone who appears woozy, who needs assistance walking, the natural next question is, does he have a concussion? So what was the scene last night after Davis was struck in the head, Dave? Yeah, Malika, that's the word, woozy. I was told that's how Anthony Davis was feeling when he made his way from the Lakers bench through the tunnel back towards the Lakers locker room. And he needed the assistance of a wheelchair. And a part of that was how he was feeling. And part of that is just the back of the house at Chase Center is pretty expansive. And where they were carting him away to be evaluated uh, was a bit of a trek. And so they had a wheelchair available. He, he took it. He was covering his head with his hands at that point anyway. Uh, and there was an initial valuation at the arena after the game. And uh, I reported last night that there was no mention of a concussion after that initial evaluation. So certainly, um, as of last night, was not put in any sort of concussion protocol. And again, as my reporting suggested this morning, it doesn't sound like uh, the concussion protocol started for him on Thursday morning either. Well, it sounds like Lakers fans can breathe a sigh of relief here. Dave, thank you so much for spending some time with us here on NBA Today. So, so that's the Anthony yeah. Davis side of things, Perk. And this is great news for Lakers, for Lakers fans, that there is no scenario, Dave is reporting, that he will miss this game six. But there was something else that stood out to you last night. Absolutely, and it's time. And Danny, come on back with me. All this right, is my first it. time in studio with me. Get your bow leg yourself <laughs> up. And look, I know y'all see me without a jacket, and it's not because I'm trying to make a fashion state statement or show my physique. It's because it's hot in this damn studio. <laughs> and I've been preaching about turning on the damn AC, but they don't hear me. So I had to bring my own cold weather. How I'm bringing it? The perk freeze sheet. I'm going to break down two clips, but first, Steph Curry has some words I think we need to listen to before I do it. Draymond, when he's aggressive, especially the way that they're defending our perimeter guys, uh, it gives us a whole nother element. Uh, him putting pressure on the rim and we can pull AD away from the rim and uh, you know, just give him a different look. So we love uh, aggressive wigs. He was that all playoff run last year um, and he showed signs of it and tonight was the wigs that we want to see every night. So, you know, like we said, we're coming into this game, we just wanted to win one, give ourselves a chance, uh, knowing that we have a big game six down in L.A. And, and, uh, and, and we obviously need that one to stay alive. Well, we know all the attention is on Steph Curry. The others are going to have to step up and beat him. I want you to watch this. Getting Anthony Davis in the pick and roll. Watch Draymond Green. Freeze! Watch Draymond Green. Knowing he don't want to shoot the three-point shot, Vanderbilt is going to help off of him. What does he do well? Attack the basket, get an and one going through his chest. Run it back again. Matter of fact, Draymond had 20 and 10. Here we go. Another pick and roll with AD. Freeze! Y'all want to pick on Steph because he's small? We're going to pick on Dennis Schroeder. Andrew Wiggins, 6'7", Dennis Schroeder, 6'1", Mouse in the house, Daddy Ball, and one going to the free throw line. Those two guys were huge last night, and they were the sole reason why the Warriors were able to get game, game five on, at home because of the player Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins. They were both exceptional. The Warriors entering last night, That's they were 12 and 5 this season yeah. when Wiggins scored 20 or more points. So that should have been an indicator there. You just got a front row seat to the free sheet. How are you I feeling, did. Danny? It was great. He did an amazing yeah. job of, of breaking down the game. Oh, well, no. I, I love you better than Richard already. <laughs> Danny, I want to get your thoughts on this. What did you see from their backcourt last night? Um, from the Golden State side, yes. they did a great job with set of. Draymond pushing the pace, but getting AD away from the, the, the paint, you know, making him play out in the perimeter, 
with less pick and rolls, having Steph in, involved as much. But Steph was more of a facilitator to start, try to get Clay early, get Jordan Poole early, um, you know, get those guys in rhythm because they're going to need those guys to score. Uh, knowing that how, how good the Lakers are scoring and defensively, I wouldn't say they're lacking uh, as were in the past, but you know, this year they're not as great as they were in the past right. defensively, so they usually outscore people. So they need Clay, they need Jordan Poole, they need Wiggins to score. Draymond, thankfully, scored 20 and 10 for them. That gave him a boost, but next game is going to be tougher in crypto. Draymond had came out firing too, right? He set he the did. tempo from the very start. All right, so that was all last night, but let's take a listen to what Steph Curry and company had to say about this series moving forward. The mental of preparation is you know understanding that we've played well enough down there to have won you know both of those games accepting you know our shortcomings there but also understanding you know we can make the necessary adjustments to hopefully get off to a good start in, in game six bring the effort and the competitiveness and the same fire we had tonight i mean that's the that's the game plan and, and again just get lost in the game down there because it's going to be a fun atmosphere you know our job isn't done we're still facing elimination and we'll be facing elimination for the rest of this series. So, got to have the same mindset. Back against the wall, you got to come out fight. Last game six you guys played, you, you said you guys approached it like game seven mentality. Didn't want to go back to Memphis for game seven. Is that, I assume, the same uh, approach going to this one? Yeah, it's the same. It's so, the same. if the Warriors are going to force a game seven, they'll have to pick up just their 14th road win of the entire season. I want to start with you here. How can the Warriors carry that momentum onto the road for tomorrow night's Game 6? Malika, their defense has to travel, period. Mm. And, and, and I think when their defense travel and they can get stops, they can get out and, and run. And then that's when the, the Warriors are so dangerous and hard to guard because if Draymond's pushing the pace in transition, you have Gary Payton and Andrew Wiggins going to the rim, you know, putting pressure with the layup as well as Draymond. And then the second layer of that, is what the three-point shooting clay coming down on one end steph coming down on the other end or if uh, steph is pushing the pace so if they're able to get stops that's when they're the toughest to guard because the first order of business is stopping the ball or making sure you guard them above the, th the three-point line but when gary payton is in transition getting layups how do you guard that now if they're in half court they need steph to be steph but just the decision making i thought he settled a little bit he sometimes he let Biggs, uh, he let Dre, uh, I'm sorry, he let LeBron off the hook and he let AD off the hook by settling for contested threes when I thought he can get into the paint a little more because when he does, collapsing defenses, finding open shooters, that's when they're so hard to guard. Brian? Yeah, I think one of the reasons he did that, Vince, is because this is the way the Lakers have been playing him the entire series. They watched him dismantle the Kings on in game seven, particularly in that last round. And they were like, we don't want to have that happen again. They have focused their entire defensive energy into keep getting the ball out of Steph's hands. And it has worked for, for the most part, but it didn't work last night. One of the reasons it didn't work last night is Andrew Wiggins had his best offensive game of the series, 25 points. It was a huge difference to have Wiggins that aggressive and that involved. And then we had Draymond Green, who has shown more offensive firepower in this postseason. A 20-point game that is so important with the way the Lakers are electing to guard Steph. And, you know, I think that you'll see, uh, especially in Game 6, they're, they're going to need more of that. You know, Clay Thompson, we always hear about Game 6 Clay. Right. And it refers to that incredible performance he had in 2016. He's had a bunch of big, great road playoff games. It was huge in Game 2 of this series when he hit eight three-pointers. Getting a big game out of Clay would be everything for them tomorrow night. Now welcoming in our NBA reporter Tim McMahon who is covering the Suns. So Tim, let's start here. What is the latest that you're hearing about DeAndre Ayton's status for tonight? Well, I'm certainly not getting a strong sense of optimism, Malika, but he has not been ruled out at this point. Mm. I'm told he is experiencing significant pain, that it's an injury that typically would take two to three weeks from uh, to recover from, but he's continuing to go through uh, the, the, the treatment process and that a final decision on his game six status won't be made until closer to tip off. He is dealing with a rib contusion. Uh, obviously banging with Joker is not a whole lot of fun when you're fully healthy. You can imagine uh, with some bruised ribs. So not optimistic, but not ruled out quite yet. Well, this is a team that is already missing Chris Paul for this game. So Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, they're top five in most minutes played in these playoffs. What are they saying about their workload ahead of this one tonight? They don't want to talk about their workload. Mm. You know, Kevin Durant says everybody's playing 40-plus minutes during the playoff. Basically, why are you out? Why is everybody always asking us about it? Of course, it's not just workload. It's usage rate. But these guys 
KD and Devin Booker, they say, look, we don't mind having that kind of responsibility. We don't mind. They're not, they won't call it a burden. You, you talk to Devin Booker, and he, he's talking about, I love this. He's talking about embrace the challenge, embrace the opportunity. They understand they have to play like superstars for the Suns to win, and that's a challenge that they are not only willing to take, but excited about. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.